All right, so this video goes over building the Split 89 keyboard. Uh, real quick, before we get into the intro here, I want to point out to the right there, there is a chapter list. And if there's a particular point in the build you're trying to jump to to get information for, check that out, and hopefully it gets you to the information you're looking for quicker. And with that, let's get started. Um, you've decided to build a Split 89. I think that's awesome. Um, I've used this for several months now, and it's my daily driver, and I've got no desire to change this design. Um, I've been really happy with it. Um, the cool thing about building this thing from the ground up is that you get to customize it to your liking. Um, then there's five things you can change there. Uh, the rest of the stuff, like the Pro Micro and the wiring on the inside, that's pretty generic. We're not going to mess with that. But of those five things, the first thing we can do is pick out a filament color and finish, and that's going to be used to print out your, your body pieces for your keyboard. Um, this is a matte black PLA. Um, the next item you can, you're can you going to be picking out is your key switches. These come in different colors, different spring tensions, and different feels. These are Gateron Ink V2s. Um, then we've got our stabilizers, which come in a few different colors, but there's not a lot to really customize there. There's some different brands that people really like, but pretty standard piece there. And then there's the keycaps. There are a ton of options out there, different color profile, uh, colors, different color schemes, different materials, uh, different methods of manufacturing, different profiles. So a lot to customize there. And then you've got your wrist rest vinyl you can wrap. This is car auto or automobile car wrapping vinyl. Ton of colors, ton of finishes. So if you consider that, you know, on the outside, you're going to pick all these different items to customize this keyboard to make it uniquely yours. All right, so you're building this keyboard. The first thing you got to do after you get your materials uh, picked out and ordered is print out the body pieces. Um, I printed out my pieces on a textured uh, print bed, and one of the reasons I did that is if you print this out perfectly smooth, you're going to be able to see the lines the way it's printed. Maybe that's what you're going for, you know, and that's that's cool too. Um, I kind of like the textured finish, so if you scratch this, those, those scratches are going to blend in. Um, and it makes it actually hides the print lines really well too. So you get a nice consistent surface there. Um, if you're you know if you're chomping at the bit to really get this thing built and start on it, uh, print your body pieces first because you can get your key switches installed and start working on the wiring while you're printing out the additional pieces. All right, so there's a few things I want to talk about, kind of some high points regarding printing these pieces successfully, um, especially the ones with your key switches. The first one is good first layer adhesion. That means when this is sitting on your bed, that bottom layer is, is sticking well down to the bed. Um, if it doesn't stick to the bed, you may actually have these corners lift up and they'll actually round off and deform a little bit. To ensure a good first layer adhesion between my prints, instead of just wiping with isopropyl alcohol, I went ahead and washed these with Joy dishwashing soap, my bed on my printer, and uh, that removed any and all residue. The IPA does a pretty good job, but it seems like I get buildup over time that only that degreasing dish soap will get rid of. And I got good first layer adhesion that stayed stuck throughout the print without using any kind of brim or anything like this. Um, the second point I want to talk about is elephant foot compensation. These holes are 13.9 millimeters designed square. This is 14 millimeters, so there's 0.1 extra material in there that ensures a friction fit, but it does not deform the switch. If you disable elephant foot compensation, this is the first layer again, those first couple of layers actually squish in a little bit and you get a smaller hole. The problem with that is when you go to install the switch, it's going to be kind of tight to install there and once you press it into place that extra material is going to squeeze this case and deform it and this will not function correctly so make sure you have elephant foot compensation enabled to get a good fit or do these slide in um, and there's just a little bit of friction there to keep this in place but it's not deforming the switch at all so in the files for the keyboard there is one called keyhole test print and this is 13.9 millimeters on a side. It's the same thickness as the keyboard body top surface that your key switches are installing in. And this is a good way to make sure that your slicer settings are good. Um, you want to make sure you have elephant foot compensation enabled. So that ensures these sides are flat. So uh, you want to print this, flip it over because this bottom side is actually what's going to be face up on your keyboard and test fit one of your key switches. If it installs, uh, you know, with a little bit of friction, but not too much and, and, and snaps into place and the sides are flat, those slicer settings should work for the body pieces, which are like 12 to 16 hours a piece. Um, those, those big pieces, they're, they're a longer print and they cost a few dollars. So um, I've, I've wasted a few dollars and a few hours on getting that incorrect. So uh, trust me when I say this is a good idea to print this out, make sure it fits correctly, and then move forward with slicing your body pieces. And lastly, all of these parts 
I've oriented them, the STLs. If you view them in GitHub, there's an, there's an STL viewer there. You'll see how I've got them oriented. They should show up in your slicer the same way. And that'll, uh, you just have to go ahead and slice them and print them at that point. That's the best orientation I found for printing these pieces. Um, the wrist pads do print face up. So there's quite a bit of support material under there, but what that does is it guarantees a nice clean top surface. So you can sand that down a little bit to prep it for the vinyl wrap. And once you get the vinyl wrap on there, it's nice and clean. So that should about do it. Just kind of the high points on printing these pieces. Um, there's more notes in the GitHub documentation. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is install the switches and the stabilizers. The, uh, the switches, pretty straightforward. You're gonna put them into the hole and press them into place. The, if you look at the shape of it, there's a, there's a sloped side right here, and that's actually going to go forward. When you look from the top, you can see kind of a gap in there. That's gonna be going forward, and this, this rounded part goes back. Um, so that's how the switches are going to install. Then you've got your stabilizers, and they're made up of five different pieces. You've got these little inserts that go on the inside, these larger body pieces that go on the end, then you have this, this wire that goes across. Now, this can get a little confusing which way to put them in, but essentially, I look at it like you've got these two legs on the end, and I have that point towards this T-looking part where the wire is going to go in. And they essentially only install one way where they can drop through and come out the other side right there. If you put them in the other way, they're not going to be able to drop to get down there. So switch it around and then that drops all the way down there. And then the wire itself, what you want to do is I just pinch it like this so that centers that piece in there. And you're going to take this wire and... There's a hole right there. It's gonna line up on that bottom. You can see where it's going in there. And then just pop it straight down. It snaps, it snaps into this little gap right here. I'm trying to get that in focus for you. And that's how you put these ends on. Oops, I actually put that on upside down. Let's fix that. So I'm gonna pop this up, switch it around, put it in there, pop it back down. So now you got your stab belt. So to put the stabilizer in, we're going to slide this bar under these tabs here and just push this back and then just press it down. So it kind of rot rotates down in and then you pop it down. And then take your switch, you put that there. And there you go. And so that's how you build your stabilizers. That's how you install them. Um, again, they just kind of rotate down, tuck them back a little bit. You'll, you'll feel them come back to their back position here and then pop them straight down. And there's little snapping tabs there. You'll kind of hear them as you press them into place, uh, engage there. And that's how you install your switches and stabs. You can see on the back here how those come through as well. All right. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is form your diodes for installation uh, onto the back of the key switches here. That's going to be part of your wiring matrix. Real quick, we want to notice here on this diode, the bottom of it has a dark ring, and that's going to be facing down like that when you're looking at the keyboard there. If we look at the diode reel here, you can see all of these are facing down, and that's real important. Um, if you get that backwards, when you go to press the key, it's not going to register with the keyboard. Um, so the direction of electricity flows from anode to cathode, Anode is the positive part up here. Cathode is the the uh, this black this black ring here. I think it's the negative. They call it the negative side. But electricity flows this way only. Um, so you want to make up a form. I I suggest doing this. It makes it so you can make your 89 diodes consistent in shape uh, for installation. This is about uh, maybe a half inch or a centimeter apart. Um, you can use you know pins and cardboard or tacks or something like that. But I'm going to put my diode here with the cathode down. And I'm going to bring this bottom. I made sure this was square. They're perpendicular to the direction of these nails. So you get a nice L shape there. And the top I'll curl down just a little bit further. So when I glance at this, I know which side I need to curl. So I've got my diode there with my angles. I'm going to take my needle and those pliers and just wrap this around like that. Press it flat. Now you can see I've got that L shape. Take my side cutters. I'm going to cut off the end here. 
and now I've got my L-shaped diode. I'm going to do that 89 times uh, to build out these rows, and then you just set them on here, and we'll talk about soldering them up here next, but this just goes on here like that. And then you just build your rows across. On these guys here, you kind of have to form that wire up and over. And sometimes I'll take those ends that I cut off and, and just solder them on to extend it to get around there. Um, and I'll show you the result of that here shortly. There we go. All right, so we talked about how we need to shape our diodes. And one other tip I'll throw out there for productivity's sake is you've got 89 of these to do. And sometimes muscle memory can be pretty repetitive and you can get stuff done quicker. So that what I would do, I'd suggest to get this done quicker is shape all your diodes first. So get them on your jig there. Put this off into your pile and go through and do 89 of these. Then come back, grab your pliers, and curl the end and do all 89 of those in a row and put them in your pile and then come back with your wire clippers and just go through all 89 and clip the end off um, you can of course do them one at a time if you wish but I found kind of that process to make it go quicker to do all 89 uh, consistently at the same time and it'll save you a few minutes probably all right one thing I forgot to mention is um, when you're installing these rows, there's there's two brass pins you're going to see on these key switches. And I've set this up so I install across all these top pins for the diodes. And these other pins are going to be used by when I put my column wires in. Um, the other thing is these diodes are super lightweight and sometimes getting in there, they jump around quite a bit when you're trying to get them on those pins. A pair of these tweezers you can get off of eBay or Amazon for a couple bucks is a real nice helper, especially when you're putting those uh, column wires in and you're trying to bend them around and shape them. Um, so highly recommend picking a pair of these up to uh, save with the frustration of getting these really lightweight little components installed. All right, so this is what it looks like when you get your diode rows installed. Um, you can see the cathode black lines are at the bottom here. We've got our L shapes that we formed. The loops are soldered up here on the pins. The L-shaped legs are soldered where they lay over each other to, to form those rows. Um, I did use the scraps that I cut off the looped end um, to make it from uh, the end of this diode here to here. So you can use that to kind of splice those longer runs that the uh, diode by itself won't reach. And then I also used the soldering iron and pressed down the wire into the body just a little bit where it crosses between switches and that's just to make sure that these don't rattle once you have the keyboard put together and you're typing on it. Uh, let's see here. There are a few spots where you have to route the wires um, around. So you basically uh, get it soldered in place, grab your tweezers and you can kind of pull those into place. Um, and then on the, the uh, wiki, on the, the GitHub page rather, there is the wiring diagram there that'll show how these rows are wired out. Um, they look kind of interesting when you get down towards the end, but logically the software sees um, a grid when this is, uh, this is built out. So that's how you uh, wire the diodes in.